All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Super Light Coupe build. In this video, we are going to rework the pedal assembly and also install it in the chassis. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, so if you remember back, uh, there was a video number 27. I basically fabricated a bracket and lever assembly that connected the tilt and floor mounted pedals to the Camaro power brake booster. And that's basically, uh, you know, these parts over here. And I thought, you know, it was done and I thought I did a thorough and a good job. Turns out there's a couple things that aren't quite right about that design. So at this point, I'm going to just consider it a prototype and I'll use that for the basis of the next version of the pedal assembly, which is what we'll cover in this video. Okay, so this is the original setup that I had. I mean, here is the bell crank assembly, and then this is the the race car replica supplied uh, pedal slider. And I really tried to marry the two. When I first bought the kit, I did not think I was going to put power brakes in the car. And I simply wanted to use this in order to position the pedals uh, properly for me. And, you know, if perhaps I wanted to set the car up for somebody with a do with uh, shorter or longer legs, I could do that. Uh, but anyway, it turns out I'm going to remake this whole setup. And, and here are the, the four main reasons why I've decided to make a change here. So if you remember, this is the... Uh, a piece of the bell crank assembly from this product I bought. Uh, I bought it off of eBay and essentially it's a bell crank assembly to convert a 1965 to 74 manual brake uh, Dodge cars to power brake. And it turns out the math behind this lever doesn't work for our purpose here. Uh, for some reason, uh, the math, and we'll get into the math in a little bit, uh, this creates too low a pedal ratio, so I've got to I've got to remake that part. The other thing is, you know, when I remake the part, I've got to move this peg up, and and if I wanted to keep this design having a, an adjustable actuator rod that I could move uh, based on how far away the pedals are. This piece, because it's up higher, now interferes with the housing on the brake booster. So I really have to step away from this multi-hole design. The other thing is, you know, I have this, this assembly overlapping the slider plate uh, just because the rod on the brake booster is pretty long and I did not want to cut that down. I didn't want to compromise that in any way. Uh, just leave it as is although it would have been it would have been nicer to have a brake booster with with a uh, Threaded rod end that was not as long and I didn't have I wouldn't have to make this this uh, Piece of the assembly so deep, but but anyway, it is what it is uh, the problem behind sort of this overlap is twofold first off, you know, it leaves me enough room to put two bolts uh, for this bracket and when you step on the brake it, it sort of tries to pick this up a little bit and it sort of rocks it on the floor uh, Ideally, I really need a bolt in front of the pivot point So the new design will will take that into account The other thing is it turns out there's a a bolt in the chassis that comes out right about here sort of right on the edge or, or a little bit inside the edge uh, you know of this of this uh, bracket so that interferes and then lastly you know you have a bolt right here to attach the plate and then there's a a panel for the front compartment that goes under the chassis right about here so we've got a bolt here a bolt coming up from the chassis here need another bolt here and then we have a seam right over here so it, it turns out there's just too much going on in that particular area so 
I'm just going to change some of the dimensions of these components and I'll, I'll sort of walk you through that in the next segue. Okay, before we take a look at the new, the new pedal assembly, let's take a look at the math behind the uh, bell crank bar. So here's the general concept, right? You have the tilt and pedal, which is a manual brake pedal assembly. And that normally pushes directly on a master cylinder. But what we have, we've introduced this bell crank uh, lever or slave lever uh, between the manual pedal and the power brake booster. And what this lever does is it changes the ratio between the pedal and the brake booster to get it right. Now, the original, the original math behind the supplied, uh, the supplied bell crank lever, you know, it's 109 millimeters and that hole, the middle hole is up uh, 60 millimeters. So you do some math, I won't go through the formula, and it turns out that it takes the brake pedal ratio and you multiply it by 0.55. So it almost cuts it in half. And the lowest level, the lowest pedal ratio and the, the pedal ratio on the tilt is adjustable. It's 5.29 actually, but I put 5.4 here. And that gives you a 2.9 pedal ratio. Uh, you know, that just doesn't work well for power brakes. If the ratio is too low, you get a hard brake pedal. They recommend, in general, your, your power brake pedal ratio is about four, and that works out pretty well. Uh, the stock Camaro system, it's 3.9, and another builder put this setup in his car, and and it turns out 3.7, 3.8 works out pretty well. So I'm re-engineering. I'll go to this next, this next shot here. So these are the new dimensions of the new, the new bell crank rod. And I made it a bit taller and I moved that second hole up. And the math behind it now is that uh, it reduces the pedal ratio by 0.68 and I did the math on all the pedal ratios so the tilt and by flipping around the pads on the on the pedals you can go from a 5.29 ratio to a 5.75 and if we use a 0.68 uh, reduction calculator factor uh, the pedal ratio can go from 3.59 all the way up to 3.9. So, you know, this pedal ratio really has it covered. And that's basically uh, the new design for the new system. Okay, so we'll take a look at the new, the new pedal, pedal assembly. Okay, well, here's the new version of the pedal assembly. And I call this the simplified pedal assembly. It provides as much adjustability as the prior version. It does require a bit more work though to reposition the pedals and so forth. But uh, let me see, let me point out a couple things. So, so this is the new uh, bell crank bracket that I put together. So I've got enough room for two mounting holes down here. I've got access holes so I can get my fingers in there. Then I have an access hole for a socket wrench so we can bolt this to the chassis. You could also see uh, there's another mounting hole in front. So this mounting hole is a good, you know, two, two to three inches forward from the other bracket so we can secure this in front of the pivot point uh, of the uh, brake lever. So I sort of like that it's it's uh, tightened down more securely on the chassis. I replaced this multi-hole actuator rod with just a, a single hole unit. Uh, if I if I need to move the pedals around, you know, I'll create some more of these. Not a big not a big deal. I made this out of quarter inch steel, so it's nice and strong. And I've got these uh, nylon bushings in there, so it works very smoothly. 
Yeah, this really works nice. I mean, it's a, it's certainly a very heavy duty uh, approach to uh, connecting to the brake booster, so I like it. Let's see, the last thing to point out is I replaced the sliding uh, adjustable plate from race car replicas with a simple uh, half inch aluminum plate. I threaded uh, the mounting holes at 1.1 inches apart. Uh, the mounting holes on the bracket are 2.2 inches apart. So basically at 1.1 inch increments, I can move the pedal assembly forward or backward up to 2.2 inches uh, deeper into the foot box or, or towards the driver. Uh, the current position is really where I think I need it. So I'll have uh, plus or minus 2.2 inches of adjustability, which I think will be more than enough to be comfortable in the car. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, the next step is we're going to install this into the uh, chassis. Okay, well, we're going to take this piece of plywood. I've got the uh, bracket assembly attached to the plywood, and we're going to slide this into the foot box. So, you know, in the foot box, you know, I've got the you know, I've got the brake booster, the brake booster there. There's that hole for the floor pan. Sort of annoying that's where it wound up, but it is what it is. Now I want to center uh, this bracket right between the forks of the uh, you know of the bell crank lever, and. You know, I could simply put it in there and drill a hole and move it around, but I like to visualize stuff. So I'm using this as a pattern. So I want to, this is the shape of the foot box. We'll slide this in and this should put the uh, bracket in the proper location. And if it is, then I have holes in this piece of wood. I'll take this out. I'll use this piece of wood as the template, mark the holes, and then I'll drill the holes. So I always like to visualize things before I start, especially before I start, you know, drilling holes in the, in the chassis. You know, I, I certainly, certainly do not want to drill these holes in the wrong, wrong place. Okay, so we're going to slide this in and we'll take a look at it. Okay, well, I used that template and I marked the hole. The hole is really where that pink circle is. And then I got a second one in the back. Uh... But when I look at it, it really doesn't appear to line up. So I drilled another hole sort of sort of next to it or, or concentric circle. Part of the issue is the floor is not 100% straight. And it, it sort of, I think, angles those forks a little bit. So, yeah, I moved it back and forth. I looked at it from various angles and... I think where I have that pilot hole is correct. Uh, I can't really get it exactly lined up here with the camera. But, uh, but anyway, I'm going to drill it out. We're going to see if we, uh, we got it in the right spot. Okay, well, I just finished drilling uh, this hole for the, for the bell crank assembly. wanted to point out a couple things. Uh, I was able to take a measurement from the center spline over to the center of the hole and also the center spline over to the brake booster rod to double check the measurement. So I think I got it right. Uh, also, here's a sort of a peak of the sort of the curvature, the curvature of the floor. And, you know, just due to the heat of welding the chassis up, the floorboards do have a little curvature to them. So... So that's what I was talking about before. And then this is, you know, this is uh, a hole to attach the front compartment floorboard. And, you know, with the prior design, we had this bolt in the way, this line in the way, and, you know, there was just a lot going on. So I purposely made the bracket a bit deeper to get that bolt in front of the pivot point and also clear, you know, clear the panel here. Okay, so I'm going to... Bolt that uh, bracket on, the uh, bell crank bracket, we'll see if it's centered. Okay, well this came out great, it came out perfectly centered. So it did pay just to take some extra time and 
and just make sure we got it right. So anyway, this is perfectly centered. So I'm very happy with this. I'll drill a couple more holes. I will mount the back of this bracket and then we'll mount the, uh, that pedal plate and we'll be done with the pedal assembly. Okay, I think this will be the last segment of this video. We'll call it a wrap. I did place the pedal assembly in the foot box here and you can see you know, it all sort of lines up really well. I also put in the steering shaft. So I got a nice amount of distance now between the clutch pedal and the brake. I actually moved the top of the clutch pedal over. You can see that piece of plywood. That piece of plywood is there as a guide. That is going to provide a 1.5 degree angle for the pedal assembly and that pedal assembly will match up you know you can see sort of the angle of the steering column that's one and a half degrees and then the seat will also be one and a half degrees so that's how i'll ensure when i drill those holes it's going to come out exact uh, you can see from in here i mean you know plenty of room for the f for the feet to clear the steering shaft uh, I think this will work out great you know and ultimately you know if I need to set it up for a little deeper deeper pedal or, or pedal that's that's closer to the driver I can do it without too much hassle okay uh, let's see I think that'll 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 be a wrap uh, once again thanks for watching and take care